Quick review before we talk more about political parties. So checks and balances was in the news recently. Technically, this was an old PowerPoint, so not in the news recently, but it was in the news. Remember, the legislative and executive branch can check each other. So if we look at a case in New York, the new mayor said, hey, man, soda is unhealthy. We need a new law to ban sugary drinks. He can't write the laws, but he can propose the laws and encourage the legislative branch to write that law. And they did. They wrote a bill that made it illegal to have like 32 ounce Slurpees in New York City. They, they made a law that said after a drink is so many ounces, like 32 ounces, 40 ounces, 60, it's illegal. You can't sell big, giant, extremely large sodas in New York City. They made a law. Not so fast, my friends. They made a law. He signed it. Boom, mayor. And so it went into impact, into effect. But guess what? Checks and balances. The judicial branch came in and said, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. We have the power of judicial review, and we went to review that law, and they used their power of judicial review. They used checks and balances, and the judges came in and said, nah, that law is unconstitutional. It gives too much power to the executive branch. You're overstepping what you can and cannot do. And thus they removed the law and the ban on sugar, soda, sugary drinks got banned. So it's almost like it never existed. And people in New York rejoiced and drank 30 ounce big gulps and 45 ounce sodas and were chugging down their Mountain Dews. All right, start the timer. I probably should have started the timer already. We're going to talk about political parties. History of political parties. So Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, we go way back to the very beginning of our country because I, as I explained in the previous video, we've had political parties. We've had these groups getting people elected and then the people get elected and they serve the group. Well, so why did they even create these group political parties? It doesn't sound like a good system. Thomas Jefferson, I want to become president to assure that state governments have power. Remember, he's an anti-federalist. Alexander Hamilton, I completely disagree with that. The national government should have the most power. Oh yeah, well, you gotta get elected first. Bring it on. And so they realized Jefferson wants it his way, Hamilton wants it his way. Well, if you do it all by yourself, it's gonna be tough to win that election. So Jefferson realizes that he really, really wants an anti-federalist government. He wants his way to be the way that it is, and he's smart, and he decides, I need people to work together with me, and so he creates a political party, and Hamilton does the same thing. He creates a political party, and from there, the political parties try to get people elected so that they can influence the law, so that they can set public policy. George Washington I totally did not want this to happen. George Washington was completely against political parties. He thought this would be a problem, and it is. But guess what? No one listened to him, and we are now today stuck with these political parties, and there's no turning back, and political parties exist in every nation. It's a group that helps individuals get elected, and once the individual gets elected, they then serve the group. Today, you have the Democratic Party, which has mostly liberal beliefs and believes that the government should be very big and help people. This often results in high taxes and the government should protect our rights, whereas the Republican Party, now these are overgeneralizations. Don't hold me to these statements. Not every Republican believes in these things and not every Democrat believes in these things. These are broad descriptions of what these parties do. If you're interested in finding more about the Democratic Party, then Google it. If you want to know more specifically about the Republican Party believes in today and what their public policy is today, then Google it. But your introduction to the Republican Party is they have mostly conservative or traditional, you may even say old school beliefs, and they believe that, you know what, people should just help themselves. We don't need a big government involved in everything. And if we have a smaller government, then you need less money, which means less taxes. They also believe the government should enforce traditional beliefs. I'm not going to go into what those traditional beliefs are. I don't want to have that argument. Google it. Functions of the political parties. This is a review right here on the left. We talked about these yesterday. What are the functions? What is it a political party does? Why do they exist? What is their job every single day? So the first function of a political party, now it's the Republicans and the Democrats. The first function of the political parties is to recruit and nominate candidates. Again, the Democratic Party can't serve. They cannot be in office. You need specific human beings to do that. And so the group must find human beings to go and do the job. They must recruit people, say, hey, come join our party. And you may have been recruited once. If you go to any parade or any festival in town, there's usually a Republican Party tent somewhere and a Democratic Party somewhere, and they're spreading out and giving flyers and saying, hey, join our political party, join our political party. They may get you to join just as a regular member. They may nominate you to run for office. This is an example. Uh, right now, the process is going on. This is from a couple years ago. They nominated this guy. Mitt Romney was going to be their candidate for president. 
The next thing they do is educate you about Mitt Romney or educate you about their issues. The next function of a political party is to help their people win. They pick the guy, they got to help that guy win. That's their biggest job. And usually they do that with lots and lots of money. Celebrities throw money at them. Corporations throw money at them. Even individuals, you or your parents may have donated a little bit of money to the Democratic Party or may have donated a little bit of money to the Republican Party. It may not seem like a lot, but when you have millions and millions of people in the party, and if everybody donates, I don't know, 10 bucks, that's tens of hundreds of millions of dollars. And that helps pay for the TV ads and all the billboards and signs that you see. The last thing they do is once they've got their guy elected, they then monitor their office holder, make sure they are doing what they're supposed to be doing and representing the party and following in line with the party's orders. Today, we will talk about the similarities of political parties. A lot of times we think about Republicans and Democrats. We say Republicans and Democrats, they're so different and they're so, they're always fighting with each other. And that is true. And we will talk about some of the differences later in this video, the main differences. But there's also some similarities. There are some things that political parties both do that they have in common. The first thing is obvious. Both political parties, the reason they created the political party was to win. They didn't create the party because they won the party. They didn't create the party because it would be cool to have more friends. The reason the Republican Party existed since day one and the reason the Democratic Party existed since day one was they created the group to work to help get individuals elected. And once they get elected, they can make laws. They're in it to win it. Republican, Democrat, same reason. Number two, falls in line with the same thing that we just talked about. The Republicans want to influence policy. The Democrats want to influence policy. Now, the difference would be in the policy. One group believes in this policy, one group believes in this policy, but they both want to influence policy. What is policy? It's the plan of the government. It's the rules and procedures for the country. It's the direction of the country. They both want to go, they want to go in different directions. One wants to go this way, one wants to go that way, but they both want to go away not away, but go in a direction. So they both want to influence policy. The Republicans want to influence policy with Republican laws. Democrats want to influence policy with Democratic laws. They want to influence policy. They want to write the rules. Now they differ in what those rules say, but they both want to write the rules. Next similarity, they are both liberal and conservative. This might be the most confusing thing that we talk about. One of the most confusing things that we talk about this year. There are liberal ideas, there are conservative ideas, I'm not going to go over all of them. A lot of times when we think of Republicans, we assume that they all believe in conservative ideas. And then we often believe that, well, Democrats only believe in liberal ideas. This is wrong. And many Americans believe this, that you must then, if you're a Democrat, then you got to believe in all these things. And if you're a Republican, you got to believe in all these things. That is incorrect. Political parties have both liberal and conservative ideas. They're never just completely down the line. Now there's gonna be some people, but usually they're gonna mix and match. Let's give you an example. So here you can see a lot of liberal views and conservative views. I'll go really quick. Higher taxes, pro-choice. That means you have the right to an abortion if you choose so. Affirmative action uh, against the death penalty. Dem a liberal view is typically, and liberal views typically, or on this side of the screen, are typically are Democrat views. And conservative views are typically Republican views. But as I said, they have both liberal and conservative views. That is a similarity. They are not all down the line. There's going to be some Democrats that are all down the line. And there's going to be some Republicans that are all down the line. But usually they have some of these. So uh, uh, believe in global warming, want gun control. Lower taxes, no government help. Pro-life means they are against abortion. Uh, for the death penalty. Vouchers in charter schools and private schools. Global warming may not be real or they may not agree with that. The government should be involved in fixing it. You're going to see some conservatives that believe in global warming, but they don't think that the government is going to fix it, that it should be up to someone else. And then you have some conservatives that just completely don't believe that's here. And then they do not want their guns restricted. They want complete freedom to own any guns. Now, going back to our idea, the similarity is both parties are liberal and conservative. So you might see a Republican Party individual or group that believes in lower taxes, they believe in pro-life, but they might also be in favor of public schools. And so they have a liberal view. And you might run into a Democrat or the Democratic Party may believe in high taxes and believe in a woman's right to choose whether or not to have an abortion. But they also might believe in gun freedom. They say, hey, you know what? I don't want to restrict gun use. And you'll see that. You, I, I know a lot of Democrats, especially in the area that we live, that have a lot of these views, but believe in gun freedom. And so it goes back to the point that 
The parties are liberal and conservative. Last, both parties, similarity between these parties is that they appeal to the center. What does that mean? They appeal to the center. So if we look at the liberal views on the left, or the, well, we'll go start there. Conservative views on the right, liberal views on the left. So typically, most Democrats are going to be over here, and they're going to believe in this stuff. And the Republicans are going to be over here, and they're going to believe in this stuff. But then you have individuals who are kind of in between. They're not Republican. They're not Democratic. This man might have some liberal views, and this man might have some conservative views. He's in between. And there are a lot of Americans that are in between. Very rarely, well, there are a lot of Americans that are all the way over here. There's a lot of Americans that are all the way over here. But they cancel each other out. To win an election, you must appeal to the center. This is a similarity between the Democrats and a similarity between the Republicans. If the Republicans want to win the election and get more votes, if the Democrats want to win an election and get more votes, they got to get this guy on board. You're not going to win by only appealing to the left. And the Republicans are not going to win by only appealing to the right. And we see this every election cycle. The Republicans and Democrats both do this. They try to say things to convince people in the middle to vote for them. If they can get this guy on their side, they have more votes. Five beats four. They get elected. They go to office. They get to influence policy. How do they do that? How do they appeal to the center? Well, maybe the Democrats say, you know what? We know that gun rights are important to you, and so we will support your gun rights if you vote for our Democratic Party candidate. And the Republicans might say, we know that global warming is real, and we know that the government must fix it, and so the Republicans will pull in a liberal idea. The way that you appeal to the center is by finding ideas maybe that are contrarian or opposite of what your party typically believes in. You have to appeal to the center or you will not win elections. And this is very important today. We see a lot of these parties going crazy on the left, and going crazy on the right. And they're not going to win if they only say left-wing things. They're not going to win if they only say right-wing things. You have to convince the average American, the person in the middle who doesn't go completely radical if you want to win elections. And if you don't win elections, then you cannot influence policy. Difference. So we've gone over the four similarities. Let's talk about the main difference between the political parties. This difference can be found in their platform. What is a platform? Platform is just the term that means the list of beliefs or their list of ideology. Huh? What they believe in. So the platform is all the stuff that they believe in. Huh? All right. So we'll look at the platforms, the differences between these two parties. We told you what they do similarly. But the differences are the list of their beliefs. The Democrats believe in a big government helping citizens. The Democrats believe in tax cuts for the middle class or ending wars or pro-choice or protecting all citizens' rights, keyword all. Whereas the Republicans typically believe the government shouldn't be involved in help us help yourself. And they believe in tax cuts and fighting terrorism and they are pro-life. And maybe at one point in time when I made this PowerPoint, I don't know if this still exists, but at one point in time, they were in favor of making it illegal for same-sex marriage. That's the platform. A platform is your list of beliefs. And you can see that the beliefs over here are different from the beliefs over here. And you as a voter wonder, well, which political party should I join? Who should I give money to? Who should I support? The best way to start is to Google each political party and read their platform or read the platform of the individual candidates. If Barack Obama is running, typically his platform will fall in line with the Democratic platform. And when Donald Trump ran, his platform or the list of ideas that he believes in on his website pretty much were common with the Republican Party. Maybe you Google up Andrew Yang and you look at his platform and his platform is insanely large. He has an idea about everything. His platform's about a hundred things. And for the most part, if you look at his platform and his ideas, they fall in line pretty much with what the Democratic Party believes in. And they do not fall in line with what the Republican Party believes in. This is the difference between political parties. Another idea we should talk about here, educating voters. Remember, this is one of the functions of political parties. Costs a lot of money. If you want people to know about your guy, you got to pay money to get that word out. TV ads, internet ads. If you want to help the candidate win, you got to pay to move him all around the state. You got to get him in a car. He's traveling. He's staying in hotel rooms. He has assistance. All of this costs money. Where does the money come from? 
Sometimes the money comes from political parties. Sometimes it also comes from interest groups and political action committees called PACs. We'll talk more about what an interest group is and what a political action committee is in another video, but just in your mind right now, see it as another outside group. So this outside group is giving a bunch of money to help the guy win. Hmm. Oh, that's cool. That's just really nice of them. They're just donating money. They're not just donating money. There's a reason that that group, that interest group is giving the guy money to win. They're going to ask for a favor in return. If you give someone money to help them do something, are you going to ask for a favor in return? I scratch your back, you scratch my back, tit for tat. That's the way it works. And so the group gives money, gets the guy elected, and then the group then says, oh, we got you elected. We need a favor in return. And what we end up having is a government that's based around money. The government and the people that were elected serve the people that gave them money. They work for the money. They are not a government of the people. The people might have voted for them. But when push comes to shove, when they're in office, it's not the people they're voting for. It's not the people they're representing. They're representing the people that gave them money, the interest group, the PAC or the political action committee. This is a problem. We need to get this money out, some argue. Some say, whatever, what are you gonna do? You're never gonna remove this money. You're never going to remove this influence. Let's just move on and find a better way. Some people say, if we get rid of this money, then we return to having a government that serves the people. Last thing, third parties. We'll talk about third parties in another video, but I've got 15 seconds. So real quick, what do third parties do? They introduce new ideas. What do third parties do? We talked about Democrats and Republicans. Well, there's third parties. And the only thing that they really do, they don't win elections or lose elections. They just bring up new ideas that eventually the Democrats talk about and eventually the Republicans talk about. Third parties, new ideas. Ah, it's so loud.